In this video, we're going to talk about subsidies. Now, a subsidy is a cash payment. So it's an amount of money and what it does is it goes from the government to a business. And the goal of a subsidy is all about encouraging production. In the context of free trade and protection and, and methods of protection, that subsidies are often given to local businesses to help them better compete with overseas produced goods. So it gives local producers an advantage because they get this amount of money that can help them reduce their costs of production, supply more and better compete with foreign competition. So in terms of showing this, let's look at the subsidy graph. Okay, so we've got um, price, quantity and A, our equilibrium point. So what we've got here is supply, and this is the... So supply is the amount that the local firm can supply, can sell locally, internationally, all those sorts of things. So what happens is that the government says, all right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pay a subsidy to the local producer. And this is what it will look like. So S1 here is the amount that the local firm can now supply with the subsidy. So what can we say now? So with the subsidy, firms are able to reduce their price and supply more. And that we can see in the move from point A to point B. Now there's only one more thing to work out and that is how do we know what the size of the subsidy is? The size of the subsidy is the, the vertical distance between the supply curves. So if I'm trying to work out the size of the subsidy, it's not going to be A to B. That's not going to be how I'm going to do it. To work out the size of the subsidy, I'm going to need to know point C, whatever level that is, and the size of the subsidy is this vertical distance between the curves. So remember, the size of the subsidy, we need to go vertical. So what I do is I pick a point on the curves, I go vertical, and I need to work out that difference between the prices. And you'll be given it uh, a series of prices if they're gonna ask you to calculate that. Also, I've spelt vertical really incorrectly here. I don't know what's going on. It's the vertical, not veritical. Okay, this is what the subsidy graph looks like. Okay, now let's have a look at the economic effects of a subsidy. So the first thing in terms of a subsidy is that it is going to The subsidy encourages production. When the government gives money to the firm, that they can now say, well, we're gonna produce more. I'm gonna increase quantity from the shift in the supply curve. Oh, okay, so we're gonna increase production. And then because we're increasing production, we're gonna need more workers. So that's one thing. The other thing is that related to this is we see a reallocation of resources to protected industries. That the resources go to the industry with the subsidy. The industry with the subsidy needs those extra workers and those resources to deal with that increase in quantity, that increase in production. Now this next one's a little bit more complicated. Consumers pay a lower price and receive more goods, right? So we know that. We know that with a subsidy, we get a lower price and a higher quantity. But what I want you to think about is that consumers don't get this 
for free. That subsidies are actually a cost to the government. So consumers, that consumers pay for the cost of subsidies through their taxes because the taxes go to the government and then the government is spending money on the subsidies. So yes, consumers get lower prices, but it's kind of like they're indirectly paying for it. So the consumers indirectly pay, pay through their taxes for the privilege of lower prices. So the related point here is that subsidies are a cost to the government because um, governments are paying money to firms. So if they pay for subsidies, they might be giving up spending in other areas. So a government needs to think about what is the opportunity cost of this government spending, this G? Are they giving up extra spending on education, on hospitals, on other areas, just to support these inefficient industries? Now, the final point here is that economists, they generally prefer subsidies if a government is going to use protection. Why, why would economists prefer subsidies? Okay. Because subsidies are a cost to the government, they're not a revenue measure, governments have an incentive to get rid of subsidies and spend that money in other areas. So economists feel like if the government is paying for the protection measure, then it will be a short term thing because at some point they'll be like, you know what, we should use this money for other areas. So this is another economic effect or economic issue to do with subsidies. So that's the story with subsidies. Um, make sure to check out the other forms of protection. It's all very important in terms of economics. And thanks for watching.